welcome to Crafty Purple Dragon Channel. Today I am going to kit up my next work in progress but that means emptying the boxes because I haven't broken this kit down yet. If you've seen my unboxing and post review on the Multicolored Dragon, what's that one? <laughs> it looks a bit like a sea horse there but it's not, it's a little multicolored dragon I'll try to link them in the eye um, and the post review you'll know that I didn't rate these drills at all so I'm not going to keep them so I have a bin so that I can throw all my beads away and take the labels off and chuck them away as well. So that's what I'm going to do first. I think I might need my glasses for this. Now there were some beads in this. There were some beads in this kit that weren't as bad as the others, but to be honest, I don't want to pollute my spare drill storage. Actually, I should see if I've got 3064 in this kit, because I could just use that for it. Let's have a look. So this one is, I'm going to kit this one up, which is the cat amongst the books on the shelves. So do I have 3864? No, I have 3862. Okay. So I'll get rid of that. So while I'm doing this, what I'll probably do is do a tag. Oh no, let's play some games with Alexa. I haven't played with Alexa for a while. Nine or seven. Nope, I don't have that one. Alexa, play a game. Skills for that. Let's try one. Would you like trivia blast? Nope. Would you like to try Really earplay? nice colours. Say again. I missed that. Would you like to try earplay? No. Do you want to try Star Commander? No. Lovely colours. Do you want to try Riddle of the Day? No. Do you want to try popcorn quiz? Popcorn quiz? Uh, yeah. Don't think I've done that one. Welcome to popcorn quiz. A game where you test your movie knowledge against the world. Five questions coming up. Use the Alexa app for visual clues. First question. True or false? The Lodge. Starring Ryan Kyo, Richard Armitage, Jaden Lieber, and Alicia Silverstone was released in 1998. True. I have no idea. Oh boy. <laughs> 2019 is the right answer. Next question. No, no, no. The house is not a home. Released in 2015. Has the following tagline. No one leaves this house alive. True. That was a guess. Bravo. True or false. XXX Return of Xander Cage. Starring Deepika Padukone. Chris Wu. Donnie Yen. And Vin Diesel was released in 2006. Never heard of it. False. That was right. <laughs> 2017 is the right answer. Next question. There's the 2013 movie 
The Hunger Games Catching Fire start with the phrase, Whoa, whoa, easy. Saw some turkeys on the way here. Crossed right in front of me like I wasn't even there. True. <laughs> Another guess. Correct. Final question. True or false? 7E, released in 2013, has the following characters. Kate, Sam, Guy, and Rich. False. Just a guess. Unlucky. Damn. You won three points. Not too bad. You have a total of three points and your rank is now 163,670 <laughs> out of about 209,000 players. You need two Thanks. more points to improve your rank. Play four more games in a row for a bonus round. You want to go another round with me? No. Right, I've got 434 four in this kit, eventually. so... To storm up the link. We I'll leave that. Oh, of course, I can't leave that on. The label that I need, I can't leave on. God damn. So this looks all just going in the bin when I'm finished. Alexa, play a game. I have a few skills for that. Let's try one. Would you like to try the magic door? Yes. Three, eight, six, four. I'm Welcome sure I don't the did that already. A lantern hanging on the branch of a large pine tree illuminates three interesting things in front of us. A wooden sign below it, a bright red door in a tree's trunk, and a metal mailbox on a post just next to the door. We hear the faint sound of a flute in the forest. Nine one nine. Yes. But I can't keep it on there. What would you like to do now? Knock on the red door. We knock on the door several times. But nothing happens. Damn what it. would you like to do now? Open the red door. We approach the red door. We try the round door handle, but it is locked. There is a small bell hanging above the door. What would you like to do now? Ring the bell. Okay. You pull on the cord on the bell above the door. The bell rings. Oh, the door pops open. We go inside. We are in a tiny room, but big enough for a small table and chair. There are also two doorways. One is the doorway to the forest outside. The other is a doorway with stairs leading down. What would you like to do next? Go downstairs. We head down a narrow, circular staircase. 904. Nope. It takes us to an underground tunnel. The tunnel is dimly lit with lanterns on the wall. The ground is dead and the walls are stone. As we walk down the tunnel, we pass a big metal clock on the wall to our right. Soon after, we pass a small wooden door on our left. We can also barely hear music coming from further down the tunnel. What would you like to do now? Head towards the music. We continue walking down the tunnel. Again we hear the faint sound of music. It is getting louder as we walk, and it seems to be the same melody over and over. The tunnel curves to the right, and we see what appears to be the end of the tunnel. At the end, there is a ladder leaning against the wall. Next to the ladder sits a small upright piano. The piano plays, by itself, the melody we've been hearing. Creepy. to do now. <coughs> and go and look at the piano. We look more closely at the small piano. As it plays, the piano's keys are moving by themselves. 
we notice a single sheet of paper sitting on the piano's music rack. At the top, someone has handwritten the title, A Dragon's Lullaby. Underneath that title, seven music notes are written, B, G, A, D, E, F, C. Hmm. We should probably remember these notes. Should we? Read them again. B, G, A, D, E, F, C. Wow. They may be important later. What would you like to do now? Oh God, Tell me those numbers again. We continue walking down the no! Damn it, I didn't write them down. They were letters. Sugar. It is getting louder as we walk, and it seems to be the same melody over and over. The tunnel curves to the right, and we see what appears to be the end of the tunnel. At the end, there is a ladder leaning against the wall. Next to the ladder sits a small upright piano. The piano plays, by itself, the melody we've been hearing. Right, if I ask her the same, tell her to do the same things again, I might get those letters again. I'll do that. Like to do now. Go and look at the piano. We look more closely at the small piano. As it plays, the piano's keys are moving by themselves. We notice a single sheet of paper sitting on the piano's music rack. At the top, someone has handwritten the title, A Dragon's Lullaby. Underneath that title, seven music notes are written, B, G, A, D, E, F, C. <laughs> Sad, I've got to write notes. We should probably remember these notes. I'll read them again. B, G, A, D, E, F, C. They may be important later. What would you like to do now? Go and look at the ladder. We could look at the pianos, or we could go up the ladder. What would you like to do now? Oh, go up the ladder. Climb up the ladder. Why not? The ladder leads to a small opening at the top of the tunnel wall. We both are able to fit through the opening, and we stand up in a new, very large space that contains quite a surprise. Oh. We seem to be in a cave, and before us lies a sleeping dragon. Oh. His green body is all curled up on a bed of great pebbles in the middle of the cave. Water drips from a stalactite. Not a purple above, dragon. And the dragon breathes heavily. Damn it. We still hear the music from the piano below. Right, so obviously I don't want to do anything that stops the piano from working because it's keeping the dragon asleep. <coughs> I hope that music really is a lullaby to keep him asleep. Yep. What should we do now? Look around the room. We could get out of here. Go closer to the dragon, or we could pick up a pebble. What should we do now? Go closer to the dragon. Really? Okay, <laughs> then let's move very quietly. Good we idea. Turn across the cave and approach the pile of pebbles. The dragon is so close now. His hot, noisy breath is making me very nervous. Ooh. What should we do now? What can I do? We could get out of here, go closer to the dragon, or we could pick up a pebble. Can't what I... should we do now? I want to gently we could get out of here. No. Go closer to the dragon, or we could pick up a pebble. Can I gently touch the dragon? Really? Okay, then let's move very quietly. We tiptoe across the cave and approach the pile of pebbles. The dragon is so close now. His heart. Noisy breath is making me very nervous. What should we do now? Right, so I can't touch the dragon. When you're ready to stop playing, you can say stop. What should we do now? Get out of here. Okay, let's get out I'm not picking a pebble up and throwing it at the dragon. We pass the small wooden door and the metal clock on the wall. We again come upon a staircase at the other end and go back up. 
do it. We are in a tiny room, but big enough for a small table and chair. There are also two doorways. One is the doorway to the forest outside. The other is a doorway with stairs leading down. What would you like to do next? Go down the stairs. We head down a narrow, circular staircase. It takes us to an underground tunnel. We start walking and again past the big metal clock on the wall to our right. Then we pass the small wooden door on our left. We can also still hear music coming from further down the tunnel. What would you like to do now? Open the door. Let's check out the wooden door. I try the doorknob and it opens into a dark closet with dusty shelves. The shelves are empty except for a single glass bottle with a rubber stopper. I will pick it up and keep it safe for us. What would you like to do now? What can I do? We could look at the clock, go to the wooden door or continue walking down the tunnel. What would you like to do now? Look at the clock. Okay, let's look at the metal clock on the wall. When we get closer to the clock, we can see that it is not a clock at all. It is some sort of round dial with numbers all around. We also can now see the faint outline of a doorway on a stone wall with the dial Ooh. right in the centre. Maybe this is a combination lock for this door. Do you have any idea what the combination might be? Yes. Okay, tell me the numbers. If not, say I don't know. B, G, A, D, E, F, C. Hmm. Perhaps we should check our inventory for the numbers if you think we have them. Say what's in my inventory to check inventory. Do you have any idea what the combination might be? If so, tell me the numbers. If not, say I don't know. Check inventory. You have one glass bottle and one snow globe. If you'd like to know more about an item, ask me to describe it. Do you have any idea what the combination might be? If so, tell me the numbers. If not, say I don't know. Describe the snow globe. There is nothing notable about the snow globe. Do you have any idea what the combination might be? If so, tell me the numbers. If not, say I don't know. Use the snow globe. Hmm. Perhaps we should check our inventory for the numbers if you think we have them. Right, that's not going to work. in my inventory to check inventory. Do you have any idea so that's what all the rubbish. So, Drills. Well, that's all that was if left. Not, so and they are rubbish. Know. I don't know. That's okay. We can come back to this later. We walk back to the beginning of the tunnel. We start walking and again past the big metal clock from the wall to our right. Then we pass the small wooden door on our left. We can also still hear music coming from further down the tunnel. What would you like to do now? Go down the tunnel. We continue walking down the tunnel. Again we hear the faint sound of music. It is getting louder as we walk, and it seems to be the same melody over and over. The tunnel curves to the right, and we see what appears to be the end of the tunnel. At the end, there is a ladder leaning against the wall. Next to the ladder sits a small upright piano. The piano plays by itself the melody you've been hearing. What would you like to do now? Look around the room. We could look at the piano, or we could go up the ladder. What would you like to do now? Go back to the corridor. We could look at the piano, or we could go up the ladder. What would you like to do now? Look at the piano. I've already looked at the piano. We look more closely at the small piano. As it plays, the piano's keys are moving by themselves. We notice a single sheet of paper sitting on the piano's music rack. 
At the top, someone has handwritten the title, A Dragon's Lullaby. Underneath that title, seven music notes are written, B, G, A, D, E, F, C. Hmm. We should probably remember these notes. I'll read them again. B, G, A, D, E, F, C. They may be important later. What would you like to do now? Leave the room. If you would like me to repeat the full scene, you can say, repeat the scene. What would you like to do now? Repeat the scene. We continue walking down the tunnel. No, okay. Again, we hear the faint sound of music. It is getting louder as we walk, and it seems to be the same melody over and over. The tunnel curves to the right, and we see what appears to be the end of the tunnel. At the end, there is a ladder leaning against the wall. Next to the ladder sits a small upright piano. The piano plays by itself the melody we've been hearing. Look at the piano. We look more closely at the small piano. I keep looking at this nothing piano. The piano's keys are moving by themselves. You know, right. see the little sheet of paper sitting on the piano's music rack. At the top, someone has one book in the title, The Dragon's Lullaby. Underneath that title, the music is written B, G, A, D, E, F, C. We should probably remember these notes. I'll read them again. D, G, A, D, E, F, C. They may be important later. What would you like to do now? I'm trying to find... Go up the piano, or we could go up the ladder. Go up the ladder. I'm trying to find bags with most stuff in. So that I can put them in the bigger boxes. The ladder leads to a small opening at the top of the That's tunnel. That's not much. We both are able to fit through the opening and we stand up in a new very large space that contains quite a surprise. We seem to be in a cave. That seems and like a small bag. His green body is all curled up on a bed of great pebbles in the middle of the cave. Water drips from stalactites above and the dragon breathes heavily in and out. We still hear the music from the piano below. Let's hope that music really is a lullaby to keep him asleep. What should we do now? We could get out of here, go closer to the dragon, or we could pick up a pebble. Pick up a pebble. Sod it. Okay, let's move closer to the pebbles. Be very quiet. The dragon is so close. You pick up a pebble and hand it to me. It is warm from being so close to the dragon's breath. I will keep it safe for us. What should we do now? Okay, I thought we were going to throw a pebble at the dragon. We could get out of here, go closer to the dragon, or we could pick up a pebble. Get out of here. Okay, let's get out of here. This is my problem, dithering. Make a decision. We the small wooden door and the metal clock on the wall. We then turn upon a staircase to the other end and go back up. We are in a tiny room, but big enough for a small table and chair. There are also two doorways. One is the doorway to the forest outside. The other is a doorway with stairs leading down. Right, I'm going to go outside because I don't think we've come across anything that's got a code yet, so... Go out to the forest. We could live more 
closely at the table or the chair, or we could oh. go down the stairs. Okay. We could also go back outside. Look at the table. Let's see what's on the table. There is a small gold skeleton key and a notepad with a pen. What would you like to do next? Pick up the skeleton key. You pick up the key. It is a small gold skeleton key. You put it in your pocket. What would you like to do next? Look at the pad. I look at the notepad. There is a message on it that reads, I've gone to look for four leaf clovers. Don't forget to bring seeds, the recipe page, and one dragon pebble. What would you like to do next? Seeds, the recipe page, and one dragon pebble. We could look more closely at the table or the chair, or we could go down the stairs. We could also go back outside. Go back outside. We walk outside the tree, back into the forest. A lantern hanging on the branch of a large pine tree illuminates three interesting things in front of us. A wooden sign below it. A bright red door in the tree's trunk, and a metal mailbox on the post just next to the door. We hear the faint sound of a flute in the forest. What would you like to do? Some music. Go over to whoever's playing the flute. We walk toward the sound of the flute. Taking a narrow dirt path which winds around the tree path and into the dense forest. Ahead, we see a faint light swinging back and forth. The tree sounds get louder. Soon we see a little man with a pointed hat. He is carrying a small fleet in one hand and a lantern in the other. He walks briskly forward and greets us. Hello, fellow travelers. I am Ebby Finn Green. A friend of Gnome who lives here in these woods. I am looking for some clever folk to help me in a quest. Are you interested? I am interested. Are you interested? I am interested. Are you interested? Yes. Yes. Oh, wonderful. By any chance, have you been inside my tree home? Have we? Yes. Oh, okay. Hopefully you have gathered some special things. I show the gnome what we have gathered from in and around his tree house. Well, okay. You are not ready to journey on. You should go back to my tree home and explore. Be sure to try to collect any special items you can. Please find me again when you have collected more. Should we go back to the gnome's home or try to go back to the bluff? Go back to the gnome's home. Okay, we head back along the path through the trees to the gnome's tree home. A lantern hanging on the branch of a large pine tree illuminates three interesting things in front of us. A wooden sign below it, a bright red door in the tree's trunk, and a metal mailbox on a post just next to the door. We hear the faint sound of a flute in the forest. Check the mailbox. What would you like to do now? Check the mailbox. To the small metal mailbox. I try to open it, but it is locked. You notice and point to engraved letters on the side. They read EF Greenleaf. What would you like to do now? Go inside. 
We walk through the door. We are in a tiny room, but big enough for a small table and chair. There are also two doorways. One is the doorway to the forest outside. The other is a doorway with stairs leading down. What would you like to do next? Go down the stairs. We head down a narrow, circular staircase. to an underground tunnel. We start walking and again pass the big metal clock on the wall to our eyes. Then we pass the small wooden door on our left. We can also still hear music coming from further down the tunnel. What would you like to do now? Open the door. Let's check out the wooden door. I try the door knob and it opens into a dark closet with dusty shelves. The shelves are empty. What would you like to do now? Look at look on the shelves. We could look at the clock, go to the wooden door, or continue walking down the tunnel. What would you like to do now? Go to the wooden door. Let's check out the wooden door. I try the door knob and it opens into a dark closet with dusty shelves. The shelves are empty. What would you like to do now? Inspect the clock. Okay. Let's look at the metal clock on the wall. When we get closer to the clock, we can see that it is not a clock at all. It is some sort of round dial with numbers all around. We also can now see the faint outline of a doorway on a stone wall, with the dial right in the center. Maybe this is a combination lock for this door. Do you have any idea what the combination might be? If so, tell me the numbers. If not, say I don't know. Use the skeleton key. Hmm. Perhaps we should check our inventory for the numbers if you think we have them. Right. Say what's in my inventory to check inventory. Do you have any idea what the combination might be? Don't okay. know. Tell me the numbers. If not, say I don't know. I don't know. That's okay. We can come back to this later. We walk back to the beginning of the tunnel. We start walking and again pass the big metal clock on the wall to our right. Then we pass the small wooden door on our left. We can also still hear music coming from further down the tunnel. What would you like to do now? Alexa, cancel. Okay, goodbye. For tips and tricks, visit us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Alexa Magic Door. I can't concentrate on that while I'm doing this. Try something else. Alexa, play Animal. Can't remember what it's called. Animals by Maureen Fine. Starting now on Amazon Music. Alexa, cancel. That's not what I meant. Alexa, play a game. I have a few skills for that. Let's try one. Would you like to give the magic door a try? No. Do you want to try trivia blast? No. Would you like riddle of the day? No. Would you like to try deal or no deal? No. Would you like to give guess my name a try? No. All right. <laughs> Alexa. Play Guess the Animal. Welcome back. How many people are playing? One. Remember to interrupt the music if you know the answer. Okay. Question one. For five points, I featured as a character named Jiminy in Walt Disney's Pinocchio. Who am I? Cricket. Alexa. Cricket. Mamma Mia, you win five points. The answer is cricket. Did you know crickets are considered to be a sign of good luck in many cultures including Chinese and Japanese? Question two. For five points, I am a very elegant sea creature that swims upright with the help of my dorsal fin. Who am I? Alexa. Seahorse. Mamma Mia, you win five points. 
the answer was seahorse. Did you know? Seahorses prefer to swim in pairs with their tails linked together. Question 3. For 5 points, I feature in the book Treasure Island under the name Captain Flint. Who am I? Alexa. Parrot. Mamma mia. You win 5 points. The answer was parrot. Did you know? Parrots are the only birds that can eat with their feet. Question 4. For 5 points. I am the largest member of the cat family. I can grow to weigh 300 kilograms or 600 pounds. Who am I? Alexa. Tiger. Mamma mia. You won five points. The answer was tiger. Did you know tigers are very much an endangered species? Shit. There are more tigers held privately as pets in the world than there are in the wild. Final question. For five points, Bloody the hell. of me include Kodiak and Grizzly. Who am I? Alexa. Bear. Mamma mia, you win five points. The answer was brown bear. Did you know mama brown bears can give bear to hibernation? Can't believe the lid didn't shut properly then. You got a score of 25. Link your account to get updated when new question packs are Yay, available. top score. I've sent more information to your Alexa app. Do you want to Already be losing done? beads. Yes. How many people are playing? One. Remember to interrupt the music if you know the answer. Okay. Question one. For five points. La Cucaracha is a popular Spanish folk song all about me. Who am I? For three points, I am a black or brownish nocturnal insect with a Alexa, cockroach. Correct. You win three points. The answer that, is cockroach. That one isn't closing you know, properly. A cockroach can live for a week without its head. Question two. Hmm. For five points, varieties of me include Kodiak and Grizzly. Who am I? Just add that one. Alexa! Bear. Mamma mia. You win five points. This you hasn't been taken off. Did you know mama brown bears can give birth during hibernation? Question three. For five points. My most common variety is grey or canis lupus. Who am I? Alexa. Wolf. Mamma mia, you win five points. The answer was wolf. Did you know Cherokee Indians avoided hunting the wolf as it was believed to be sacred? Question four. For five points, I am a slow moving rodent that lives in trees and eats bugs, fruits and nuts. I am mostly nocturnal. Who am I? Alexa. Sloth. Sloth is incorrect. No, oh, I didn't For catch it all. My body is covered by 30,000 quills or sharp spines to protect me from... Alexa. Park... Alexa. Porcupine. Not listening properly, you know, that's trouble. You win three points. The answer was porcupine. Did you know the name porcupine means cool pig in Latin? Final question. For five points, I am a very thick-skinned resident of Africa and Asia. Who am I? For three points, I am under ever increasing threat of extinction due to loss of my habitat. Alexa, stop playing. Is incorrect. For one point, I am famous for the single horn on the end of my nose. Who am I? Alexa, rhinoceros. <laughs> okay, um, I'm just a little bit confused because I've just emptied 3371 into here and I've got another bag labelled 3371 and I can't remember from this opening this kit that there was like multiple bags of the same colour so Hmm. 
and they look the same. Let's have a look. Same colour. I think so. Right. Let's put them all in there. If I'd have known there were two bags, I'd have put them in a bigger... Yeah, I'm going to need a bigger container. God damn it! Alright, three, three, seven, one. Uh, that's because I'm trying to concentrate on playing games with Alexa. Right, I'll switch to doing a, a tag during edit because I need to concentrate, apparently. Skin off then. 902. I want to make sure I get the code the right way around on the lid. Otherwise you can end up putting the wrong colour on the canvas. We do it want that. There's another 3371. We're going to have room in here for 3371. Yeah, this company needs to link all the same numbers together or give us an inventory sheet with the number of bags because this is really annoying. I'm going to end up having to swap bags again, swap containers again, I think. I'll just get away with it, maybe. If there's another bag, I'm stuffed. I'll have to go up a container and then that's... Yeah, maybe I could have started by sorting out all my drills into the same numbers, but you know, I didn't, and it wouldn't be an issue if it was, if they were connected together. Mm 
doesn't help either that these bags don't feel like they've got a lot in. I've managed to not cut the corner off that. Just about. Seven seven nine. Forty six three
<clears throat> we're getting there. 
I'm a bit worried because I've got more bags of beads than I've got numbers left. Five, four, three, three, seven, one, nine, oh, two, four, twenty. Three, three, seven, one, we've already got, haven't we? I've seen that. Three, three, seven, eight. Three, three, seven, one. Yeah, three, three, seven, one. It's like a P. I must have lost another group. Three, three, nine, three, eight. Have I got that? Where's three, three, seven, one, look? Yeah, I'm going to have to take that out of there. I've made a right cock up of this, guys. This is not a very good kit up video. My head's been totally not in it for some reason. Nine one eight nine three eight. So we've got nine three eight. Nine three eight there. We'll get another bag in there, won't we? Nine three eight. I'm not going to fit them in, am I? Oh my god! Get in. Get in. Honest to God, this video is how not to do, <laughs> not to do a kitten up. Right, I don't want to put the extra beads in. I've got, not got enough space for the correct beads. Right, they're not, they're not with this lot. <laughs> That's going to be fun to open. 902, have I got a 902 already? Was there a... It was a 902 because I've got it. 902, yeah. Oh, there's two more bags of that. Right. 
one of these large ones. That on there. And then take this off here. And then that can go in there. Six three two should already have there. I find these easier to open with the top of my diamond painting pen that I'm using at the moment actually. So one, two, three, four, five. Oh, and black, which is over here, that's six. Okay, okay, so we're right now. <coughs> we're right. So four, three, six, four, three, five. Sorry about that, battery died again. No, the battery died for, died for the first time. Uh, yeah, it was the uh, memory card last time. I should just do them both together, but I don't know if you, um, like, reduce the longevity of rechargeable batteries if you charge them when they're not fully decharged. Is that a word? So, 
Might as well do four, three, four, four, twenty. And leave three ten for a minute. And do that other one. Three oh one. <clears throat> now, I'm not going to have room for all my blacks. And they're in one bag, so I can't, like, just pour a couple of bags out and leave the other bags. Cause I've got to open the bags. Right, that makes a bit of space there. They can come forward. I get a big one in there. Uh, three oh one. Three oh one. Four twenty. Um, four, three, four. Four, three, four. Right, now I need to try and fit this in because this is what I'm going to put my three tens in. These are leftover unopened packets from my previous project which maybe I can fit in here. No. So I'll just stick those loose with the, because uh, I've not de-kitted it yet. 
Uh, right, three tens. Now, am I going to be able to fit it in this box? This is the thing. This is where I have to do some shuffling. Hmm, no. Because it needs that much space. Can't fit it in. Dang! Hmm. Because I need to put... Let's get rid of them. It takes up that much space. Which means I've got four boxes left that aren't in. Unless, let me see if they're all going to fit in that big box. Do we bet they're all going to fit in? Let's have a look. So they've all fitted in there and there is a bit of space so what I could do is I'll take those two empty ones away along with this other empty and then Put these in with the black. Let's see if that makes me enough room. I might not need to put them all in. I'm not keen on putting that one in actually because it's over full. Let me have a look. I think it comfortably fits three. So I need to reorganise. One, two. I'm, not, I'm still not going to get them all in, am I? Hmm. I might do, hold on. No. It's not happening. I've only got space for that, hold on. One, two. Three, four. No. Five. No, they're not going to go in, are they? Dang! Right, okay. So I'll just have to put the big box out into the top. I tend to work with it open anyway, so it's not too big a deal. So that's the beads done. And we'll move on to the canvas when I've sorted this out. And I'm probably better off having everything out to stop stuff falling about all over the place. That's the annoying thing about this. One of the annoying things about this box. Right. Oh, sugar. Okay. Okay. 
Now I seem to be one. Alright, that can go there. And we'll lie that down to fill up the spaces. There we go. Okay. Oh my god. Oh, just smell that. Oh, can't you just smell it? Gorgeous. Right. So the only thing left to do on the drills, apart from throw away all the rubbish, I'm sorry that took so long, that really didn't uh, progress very well, did it? I'm obviously not in the right mind today for sorting out bead storage. So I'll just have to have that there. Now, I don't think there's probably a lot of point, but I do normally stick the thumbnail onto the top of the box just in case and I better label those up as 310 I mean you know it's obvious what they are but let's be consistent so 310 and I am also going to label that as the canvas library cat <laughs> pile of books I think I called it but I might call it, change it and call it library cat library cat and I shall stick that on there also in case they get separated because it's not in the main box depending if I have to move my gear or whatever okay and the is that way for you the thumbnail can go on there like that. Okay. So that's the drills done. I shall tidy up this area and then we'll do the canvas. Okay, so when uh, <coughs> excuse me, we're now on the following day. I didn't realise how late it had gotten by the time I finished picking about with those drills and putting them into the um thing. Now I just want to sort out which of these tweezers is the one with the sticky end. Because I've somehow managed to end up with two sets of tweezers here and I know one of them's... No, can't tell. Right. <coughs> And for some reason, I don't know where the other one's gone. Okay, okay, so we've done the drills. 
Now I need to look at the canvas and oh damn I missed the rubbish. See if there's anything to be done with the canvas. Where is it? Here it is. Get rid of this. And don't need this. Leave it there so I can tell you about it again. Okay, so do I need to do anything with this canvas? I think the only thing I'm going to do there's no sticky on the outside of that edge. There's a tiny bit of sticky outside of this edge and this edge. There's quite a bit actually on this edge. So I'm going to have to washi tape it. So let me just go and get my jar washi tape. What's this edge? Did I say? It goes out a little bit on that edge as well. Right, so I need some tape. This be about a centimetre wide. Uh, I might use this because it's wide. I haven't used this any on anything before. It's not particularly... It's not really going to match with the picture, but it doesn't matter. I'm not using it for framing. I'm just using it to cover the... glue around the edges of the canvas uh, but there are bits of reds and yellows in it although it is mostly sort of browns greys and greens um, I don't think blue I don't think purple I won't say pink. I think it's going to be either that, that, that might be alright actually, or go for white. I'll go for the red actually. Let's go for the red. Or should I go for the yellow? Bloody hell, decisions, decisions. Matt, we'll go for the yellow because it sort of goes better with the the other muted colours. So let me find the end of this. Huh. She says. Okay, so I need some down this side. Now the only thing that I'm going to obscure on this edge by putting this tape down is the numbers, not the, I don't think I am anyway, not the codes or the DMC numbers, just the canvas number. Am I going to interfere with the codes? Now this is actually going to go over my key so that I can't see the code but it is a little bit transparent and I've got the code in my book so and everything's um, all the drills are marked up. The 
with the symbol. Uh, let's do the other sharp edge. Don't need to do this edge, do I? No. Right, so it's just the other sharp edge and then that bottom. Right, let's find the end again. Okay, so... Looking forward to starting this actually. This will go nice on our stairs. We've got stairs that sort of double back on themselves. So we've got a lot of wall space on the stairs. Because you go up about, I think you go up about six steps. That's too close. You go up six steps to a, a small landing where you turn 90 degrees, go up another step, you turn 90 degrees again and go up the last six steps of stairs. So there's all that wall space. It is floor to ceiling, like the whole height of the house, which is annoying <laughs> because you can't use the stuff that where you can't reach. I mean, you could get a ladder, but I I don't do ladders. I'm not. I don't have the balance. And on a, on the stairs as well. I already fell down the stairs once and broke my knee. So I don't want to be falling off a ladder and then falling down the stairs, Jesus. I don't need to be incapacitated any more than I already am, thank you all. So, we, we've just put stuff up as far as we can reach, but there's still quite a lot of space. Although that said, my husband's got most of his artwork up there, so... Uh, Okay. What's that? That's okay. Okay. So I think that's all I'm going to do. The edges look fine. It doesn't look like I need to do anything to the edges. So I won't bother with taping those at all. So that's it. I'm now ready to start my next work in progress. Well, what I might do... Um, is I might just run some tape across this. Have I got anything to replace it with, actually? Let's have a look. Will that fit? No. Uh, Where will this fit? It's a bit too long. Nope. I do have some small squares somewhere. Stuff that I've cut up. So three. And then another three, or, oops, two, three. So it's going to take four that way, and then two that way. Right, 
am I going to be drilling this? Let's have a think. I'm going to start up here in the top corner. And because this is like not a very big painting, I would probably use go across the whole of the thing. So I don't think those are going to be any good. These were supposed to be being squeezed flat by two pieces of foam board, but that's not worked. Right, I think I'm going to go for the long ones. I'm not going to cut them down though because uh, I don't want to lose the length on these for anything in the future. So I'm going to replace that clear cover with these. Let's see how successful this is. Right, until I'm definitely sure I don't want that, I'm not going to crinkle it up. Okay. So, what I think I want is overlap at one end rather than both ends if I can. So I'll put that down on there. Like so. And flatten it out. down like so okay good to go Actually, do you know what I might do because there's not much of a gap here? What I might do is lay this one at the bottom. One sec. Sorry about that, there's somebody at the door. Uh, right. So what I'm going to do is, because with this I've only got that small gap there, I would normally start in the top left corner and... work my way down and then go back up to the top left corner again for the next section because I, I tend to work on the straight edge but what I'm going to do with this because of the cover sheet situation is I'll probably work that way put that on as my first se segment and then work down the canvas doing you know similar size but by the time I've done that I won't need this second piece of paper then so 
I think that's what I'm going to do. But for now, I'll just stick this on here. Until I actually start it, which I'm going to be doing in a minute when I get off camera. Okay, so that was my kitting up my next working project, uh, work in progress. Sorry that there was some dithering with the beads earlier on. Yeah, so thanks very much for your company. I hope the video was useful. However useful it was to you, I appreciate your company. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider, consider subscribing to the channel. Words. If you have any positive comments, questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you very much for joining me. Bye.